Praise you, Duave. Welcome to Torah Lessons. It's 13 September 2019. And uh, we're continuing on with the lesson. The first thing I want to say, you know, Satan got his trolls out here. And you got people coming. And that's the thing about this website or my little small YouTube page. This is for the awakened Israelite. I don't have any issue with somebody coming here to learn from another nation. Doesn't matter, white, black, whoever. If you have a disagreement, then you have to back up what you're disagreeing through with scripture. You have to have either the King James Version of the Bible, you need the Torah, or you need the Apocrypha. So now if you have those and you want to debate or argue a point, that's fine. I have no issue with that. But if you're just coming here talking, you have an opinion or disagreement, I'm going to consider you as a troll. Because everything I say, it comes from the Bible. So, Okay, we had stopped at the law number seven, going into law number eight. But the first thing I want to do is I, I want to give a personal confession and testimony about how I came to the truth. Because law seven, not to profane his name, the Most High Yudeh Wafe. So it was around 2016 when I came into the truth. And I was watching a confession, a testimony from Aaron Israel. And it was a man, you know, who died and went to heaven. And I was watching and I said, man, this sounds interesting. This is pretty real. You know, to fast forward the situation. So I came, I called upon the name of Yahweh. A Yahweh, which is in English from the name Yudewave, from Paleo Hebrew, Hebrew. And I said, respectfully, if you are who you say you are, I need some help. No, at that time, I was struggling with pornography. Uh, it was destroying my family. It was making me tired and weak, fearful. I was mean to my kids. I was always upset. And you know, when you're watching pornography, what you're also doing as well, which is a sin. And I called upon the name Yahweh, and I started to hear dozens of voices speaking to me, break it, break it. I had in my possession two uh, external hard drives. And it was full of movies and photos of pornography. And I took those and I bust them on the concrete with my bare hands, bust them into pieces. And um, from that point forward, I knew that the name Yahweh, which is Yude Wave, I knew that name had specific power. Now, someone says, well, how do you know that was the most high? Well, the devil is not going to tell you to do something positive. Like I said, pornography was really taking away my creativity. It was destroying my marriage. It was doing a lot of negative things. So I can't help it if the name Yahweh, Yahuwah, Ahiah, Ashar, Ahiah, if those names don't have power to me, the name of Yahweh, Yudei Yahweh, possesses power. And that's how I came into the truth, under that name. Like I say, I don't disrespect anybody for having a different name of the Most High. That's fine. But I'm just letting you know my personal experience. I would not sit here and tell you something that is not true, reading scripture, talking about the laws and statutes and commandments of the Most High, and then telling you a lie. I just wouldn't do it. So we're going to move on to uh, law number eight. Not to worship the Most High with pagan objects. Not to worship the Most High with pagan objects. Uh, you know, this is one that's really serious. A lot of us, we don't think much about it. So if you get, go to your King James Bible, Deuteronomy 12 and 4, ye shall not do so unto the Most High. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go ahead and let you see that. Not to worship the Most High with pagan objects. Ye shall not do so unto the Most High. So we're going to actually go there and, and see specifically. I'll give you a chance, like I always do, pull up your, your Bible. And we're going to go to Deuteronomy 12 and 4. Deuteronomy 
Deuteronomy 12 and 4. Ye shall not do so unto the Most High. And ye shall overthrow the altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall, shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. So that's Deuteronomy 3 as well. Deuteronomy 12 and 4 and 5. But unto the place which the Lord thy God, Yudhe shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even until his habitation, yea, shall seek and filter, thou shalt come. So you are not to worship the Most High, Yudhe Wave, with pagan objects. No way. So pagan objects, what are they? What is a pagan object? Some, somebody may be still confused about that. So let's see. We're going to see what a pagan object is. Pagan, pagan object. You see? The sundial that the Pope used, those are pagan objects. The, the sun wheel, pagan object, is not in Scripture. If it's not in Scripture, it's, it's that of man. And you see, pagan objects. And you see right there, see the golden calf. Pagan objects. You are not to do so unto the Most High. Also, we got to get really real about this one. We got to go to the Star of David. The Star of David. This is a pagan object. This is a pagan object. It's man made. It's man made. I'm going to show you that in Scripture. But you know, a lot of Hebrew Israelites use it. This is the Jewish flag that the um, Israelis use. And it's currently in Jerusalem right now. That's a pagan object. It is what it is. Okay. We're going to go to prove this to Amos 5 and 25. First I'm going to read it. And then I'm going to show you. Amos 5 and 25. You guys go ahead and uh, look in your King James Bible and pull that up. Amos 5 and 25. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and shewn your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, said the Lord, Yudhe whose name is the God of hosts the God of Israel. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and chew in your images, the star of your God, which ye made to, which ye made, Salakia, to yourselves. Key point, which ye made to yourselves, to yourselves. That means it was not given unto the Most High or to the Messiah from his son. It was made to yourselves. Man made that. Man made that. May have to zoom in. Man made that. I'm using an online Bible, but of course you're supposed to have your King James. And you see what Amos 5 and 25 says. So you're not to worship the most high with pagan objects. You worship the most high with prayer, fasting, uh, forgiveness, following the laws and commandments, uh, charity. Those are the things that you worship the most high to or with. Moving right along. Law number nine. Listen to the prophet speaking his name. Listen to the prophet speaking his name. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. The most high will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Unto him ye shall hearken. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. The most high will raise up a prophet unto thee from the midst of thee unto him ye shall hearken from the midst of thee from the midst of thee here we are law number nine listen to the prophet speaking his name deuteronomy 18 and 15. all right so Let's talk about that one. From the midst of thee. 
listen to the prophet speaking his name. The Messiah that came 2,000 years ago, Yeshua ben Yosef, the one that's ignorantly called Jesus, which there is no J in the Hebrew language. Yeshua, the prophet of our age, is Yahweh ben Yahweh. That's who it is. He came amongst thee. He came amongst thee from thee. Just like the prophecy says. Now, when you talk about someone speaking in his name, if you have an individual that's, pre that's, Salakia, that's preaching and teaching, and they are speaking from the scriptures, and it can be proven what they say, you should hearken unto them as well. We always try to judge an individual and say, well, you can't teach me or you can't tell me. Yes, they can if what they're saying makes sense and it can be proven from the Bible. If it can biblically be proven, you are to hearken unto what they're teaching. We always want to judge the, the messenger, but we're not perfect ourselves. I don't do anybody that way. If somebody is speaking in his name and is speaking the, the word of the Most High, from the King James the Apocrypha, what they're doing that, then I hearken unto them. Not necessarily following in their traditions and their ways, but when they're speaking the truth from this Bible. All right. Let us move forward. Going to law number 10. Law number 10, do not test the Most High by questioning his power and protection. Yea, should not tempt the Most High. Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Let's look at that for a second. So, because even if you don't have your Bibles, I'm going to show you the scripture. And then, you know, if you can stop it and go back and look at it and pull it up. Okay, here you say, law number 10, do not test the Most High. By question his power and protection. Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Yea, shall not tempt the most high. All right. We're going to go there and talk about that right quick. Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Yea, shall not tempt the Lord you Yudewabe, your God, as yea tempted him. And Messiah and Massa. Yea, shall diligently keep the commandments of your Lord God Yudewabe and his testimonies. So tempting the most high is questioning his power and protection. That's what it's doing. We all know when Satan took the Messiah Yeshua up to the mountain and promised him all of the nations of the earth, all of the kingdoms he would give him if he would just bow down and worship him. He said, turn bread into stone if you are the son of God. Jump off the mountaintops if you are the son of God. And the Messiah said, no, you do not tempt the Most High by questioning his power and protection. So if you're really believing in the law, statute, and commandments, and you're believing in the Most High, Yudek Wave, then you don't question his power and protection. You don't know how he's working. A lot of times I look back at my life and through the trials and tribulations, I was curious about what exactly the, the direction he was taking me. And then in the end, I found out I didn't even know what was going on, but he was protecting me. So all you have to do is pray and believe, follow his laws. That's all you have to do. Don't question something just because it doesn't come up to you right when you want it to. It's going to come when you need it. You don't, uh, you don't know. The, the ways of the most high is not the goings of man. Okay, We're going to continue in the laws. So, Lucky, I'll give you guys a chance to get caught up. Law 11, to emulate his ways as a holy people. Deuteronomy 28 and 9. The Almighty will establish you as a holy people if you keep the commandment and walk in his ways. Law number 11, to emulate his ways as a holy people. He's laid out the guideline for you. Let's see. Law 11. To emulate his way as a holy people. Deuteronomy 28 9.
The Almighty will establish you as a holy people if you keep the commandments and walk in his ways. Keep the commandments and walk in his ways. Now, the problem we have is we're a stiff-necked people. We want to do what we want to do. We don't want to emulate the Most High. We don't want to walk in his ways. We want to do what we want to do. And that, and if you look around at the tribe of Judah right now, the so-called African-American, the descendant of the transatlantic slave trade to the four corners of the earth, if you look at their condition, their condition is because they refuse to walk in his ways and follow his commands. So if you want to know who the descendants of the children of Israel are today in 2019, they are the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade, the so-called blacks of North America and the islands. If you go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68, Deuteronomy 28 and 68 and read back, read back from Deuteronomy 28 and 68 all the way to Deuteronomy 28. It first tells you how to identify them in 28 and 68, a group of people that was put in bondage and slavery by way of ships. And all of the curses and the prophecy of Deuteronomy 28 fits the so-called North American black person, black man, African American, Negro, it fits them. If you can find another people that that prophecy fits closer, then we can say that we are not the children of Israel. But you can't find that group of people. That's another lesson. I'm going to get into that. I know I'm going to have people come here. And don't worry, I'm going to use the scripture and I'm going to show and prove what exactly what I say. So we are to emulate him in his ways. That's us, the children of Israel. All right, moving on to law number 12. Law number 12. To cleave to him, Deuteronomy 10 and 20, you shall fear the Most High, you shall serve him. To him you should hold fast, cleave, and take, take oaths in his name. The Most High wants you to cleave to him. He wants you to call on him. He wants you to. To, to see him as your deliverer, your savior, your redeemer. When you have a problem, don't be afraid to ask unto the Most High Yudewabe. Don't be afraid to pray unto him. Don't be afraid to cleave to him. Take oaths in his name. Anything, anything that's positive that you want to make an oath to, to the Most High Yudewabe, if it's positive, do it. If you have a problem, cleave to him. Ask him for, sometimes... I don't know the answer to something, and I want to make a decision. Sometimes I will pray to the, to the Yudewabe, to the Most High, and say, I'm doing this. Um, I don't know, is it your will, but this is the decision that I'm making. I'm letting you know that I'm doing this. That, that's actually, I'm speaking to the Most High, even in, if, even in decisions I'm not sure of. I'm asking his permission when I do something. That's how I cleave to the Most High. In relationships and finance, anything. You pray to him and ask him. I'm not sure about something. I ask his permission. When I do things, I ask permission of the most high. You they wobble. As if he is here, if he is standing and sitting here, as if we are walking together. I ask him if I'm not sure. If I don't know if this is right, I, I ask him. I ask the Lord, you they wave. This is the decision that I'm making. I'm not certain about it, but I know that you will let me know, you'll give me a sign. Or speak to me if it's not correct. So, once again, uh, welcome. This is a this is a short version of the the, the the Torah laws of the Torah, the lesson of the Torah. Like I said, I'm not going to cram too much information in in one video. I'm going to stream this out every two or three days. So, Torah lessons, September 13, 2019. Uh, shalom. Peace, praise you to Wabe.